Hello everyone, welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Friday, February 7th through Sunday, February 9th, 2020. But please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the weekend of the 7th through the 9th, it does not mean it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Yes, whenever you are guided to watch this reading, and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Um, I do recommend, I've been saying this all week, I don't know why I'm continuing to say it, but I'll say it again. <laughs> I recommend that, you know, if you are wanting to look back in the morning coffee archives, check out that morning coffee playlist. Um, uh, and I would recommend that you follow the, um, what is it? the titles not the date the titles are going to give you a better idea of what the reading is about yeah okay let's get into your pre-shuffle here it took me a second i sat here for a few minutes and i just shuffled around for a while with my eyes closed so i couldn't really see anything that was going on and then finally something started to come about and it came out as the knight of pentacles with the two of wands and on overall energy is the emperor with the world okay so the sense that i'm getting from this is that i feel like um you if this is you if you're resonating with this or if this someone maybe this is ooh, ooh, excuse me maybe there's someone else here that could be um that you know this maybe you're cross watching for or you're connected to and this is happening it i don't know it doesn't matter this is a general reading so take it as it resonates but it feels like you're about to cross a threshold in terms of a, a major life decision or something that you've made here with the two of wands and really the only reason i say that is because of you have the world here but it's this side of the world in which you see the woman normally you would see her from the front right but this side you see her from the back and in the book of this deck it kind of says like you know this could be an energy of someone trying to rush a transition but you can't rush a transition you really just have to go with the flow i also kind of see with this view here i i just see her passing through this this ring or this wreath or you know it's a snake obviously but well it would be obvious if if the if, if the camera would focus but anyway um i just see i see an individual crossing crossing a threshold, crossing a barrier, crossing through a gateway even. Um, and you do have the emperor here. And so we could be talking, we could be talking about a, a masculine counterpart, whatever, but also I, we could be talking about just like, you know, you acting from a place of the masculine energy within you. I definitely feel like this is some sort of executive decision. This is a decision that you've made um, for your life to create a better life for yourself or something like that to go in a new direction to try something new to embark on a different journey than you may have been on before and with the two of wands here the two of wands is symbolizing the choice that you have made for some of you this could be a situation in which you are working on making this choice right now still okay that's fine but also then you have the knight of pentacles the knight of pentacles it is a nighttime scene and for some reason, I'm just getting an energy of um, working diligently night and day. This is something that is maybe on your mind all the time or is something that, you know, maybe might, I, I, I don't want to say really consume your life. It's not like it's consuming your life. It's just, it's a major part of your life. It's something that you deal with morning noon and night in some capacity in some way and again i'm not feeling like this is a bad thing i just feel like there is a major change that you're making to your life and <laughs> i'm hearing things like it's causing an uproar it's causing a ruckus there might be or or it may just be like there's a lot to handle here but this is slow and steady progress I just feel like with this night nighttime scene that the Knight of Wands is in on this side of the deck, I'm getting a feeling as if, you know, this is something that you're really, I mean, the Knight of Pentacles is about commitment, 100% sure, but I just get this feeling that you're really committed to this. Like you've made your decision, there's no going back from here, not that you even would even want to go back, but 
that feels good. I mean, that's a good thing. It, again, this doesn't feel hostile. It doesn't feel obsessive. It doesn't feel ridiculous. It just feels like something that you're like super, super committed to, which is great. I mean, it's what you need, it's what is needed here. And that's kind of what the emperor does symbolize. The emperor is, does make commitments. Okay. So cool. Um, I gotta pause for a second, guys. Hold on a second. Oh, sorry, guys. I had to pause for a second so I could blow my nose. Okay, but we're back. All right, so let's <clears throat> let's um let's see what else we've got here for your weekend edition. So Friday, February seventh through Sunday, February 9th, twenty twenty. Yeah, let's see what we've got. One more shuffle. Alrighty, kids. Let's see what's on the agenda for today. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of Friday, February 7th through Sunday, February 9th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, they're telling me to give six shuffles here. So that's what I'm going to do. We have one. Two. Ooh. Three. Four, five, and six for our weekend edition. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. One more. Okay, one more shuffle, they say. And then... <clears throat> and then we'll get into this. That's enough. Okay. Awesome. We have strength as the overall energy with... <laughs> strength with the Knight of Pentacles again. Okay, well. Alright. We also have the King and the Queen of Swords. We have the Three of Swords, we have the Two of Swords, we have the Star, and we have the Page of Pentacles. The King and the Queen of Swords, the Ten of Cups, the Seven of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles. Very interesting. Interestingly enough, both King and the Queen of Swords have their backs turned. And I do feel the Seven of Swords is in between the two of you. All right, so are we talking about counterparts here? Yes, we very well could be. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Um, this is an interesting message. Give me a minute, you guys. I'm just, I'm working on deciphering this as, as best I can. Um, so the first thing I'm getting with strength and the Knight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck here, um, it's like, it's like moving forward with whatever this is for you is 
really a challenge or a struggle is what I'm hearing. Like you're really having to work on taming your ego here. Um, because I, it feels like your ego could be flaring up like every step of the way <laughs> is kind of the energy that I'm picking up on. And it's not, it, it really doesn't feel like it's anything bad like you have this massive ego that's just running amok that you need to like rein in it's literally an effect of your ego doing what it's designed to do pointing out the red flags pointing out the things that you know could be potentially dangerous pointing out fears pointing out pitfall any of that stuff and or or like pointing out red flags especially from like if this is a situation from the past that seems to be in the process of resurrecting or something like that you know red flags from the past could be coming up again and that makes a lot of sense because we've been talking over this last week we've been talking about how you know you're in an energy of shifting from an old cycle or an old paradigm to the next so you have to go through this like interim period where you're kind of like you're shifting through the energy so like you like i used the venn diagram system a few days ago and it's like you're in this center area where um you're in between the two phases and you have both of those energies kind of intermixing and it's a situation which you in which you can slowly let go of the old while slowly acclimating to the new before you can finally move into that new realm altogether okay so this could be you know a train this could be a moment where your your ego is kind of really kind of flaring up and you're really needing to like and, it, and it's not even the side of the ego where you're facing the devil. I'm sorry. It's not even the side of strength where you're facing the devil. Okay. It's the side of strength where the empress is basically taming the lion or taming that beast within. And um, so this is either fortification for your character or it's just some training work for your ego. Knight of Pentacles, and now it's the daytime scene. So, okay, but the Knight of Pentacles is talking about, it really does feel like this is going well for you, whatever this is. So then we have, we have the Star, the Page of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles, and the Three of Swords. And I really do feel like this is literally the energy of you being in the center of that Venn diagram, okay? There's healing happening here with the Star and Wish Fulfillment. Whatever it is you're going through right now, the you know the universe is leading you towards some sort of wish fulfillment there's a page of pentacles so that to me is is symbolizing a new start here okay but with the two of pentacles and the three of swords it's like with you being in the center of this venn diagram here it's like you're you're balancing out and and healing with the star energy healing from the past heartbreak the past pain and past circumstances okay and bringing balance to your life bringing balance to yourself it's almost as if you're being held you're in a kind of holding pattern here in which elements from the past things that are triggers from the past things that may have hurt you in terms of this situation or whatnot whatever things that may have set your ego off or just set you off in general it's like you're in a final wash <laughs> like like you're at a car wash right now and you're at that final wash where they're really you're really getting scrubbed you're really getting an energetic scrub of all of that stuff all of that three of swords heartbreak energy that would have would used to would have used to trigger you really hard but now it's like you're bringing balance to your life here so that you can move forward so that none of that stuff bothers you anymore. That's really interesting. So then you have the Ten of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only thing I really want to say about the Ten of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles is to stay in your independence. Stay in your autonomy. Because I really do feel like the Ten of Cups is coming to you. You, you just may not be able to see it. Like, I'm going to clarify this. I wouldn't be surprised if the High Priestess comes out with this energy here. Because it, if, it just feels like an energy of... You, you just can't see this coming right now. And it may just be because you are too preoccupied in your sense of self, in your sense of autonomy, in just living your life and doing what it is you do. Wow, that is really obnoxious. I'm hoping it'll pass the police. It's them police. <laughs> it's 
the five foe is the popo. Eat the roach. <laughs> we used to say that all the time in high school. Oh, it's the five oh, eat the roach. <laughs> anyway, um, there's a sense of autonomy and independence that it feels like you're really focused on. And yes, you do want the Ten of Cups energy, whatever that would be, a family, a romance, you know, a, an ideal draw, a, an ideal job. Um, and I mean, you want that, but you're not focused on it. That's what I'm getting. You're not really all that focused on it, or at least you're not trying to be focused on it. Lord knows in my position or in my situation, it's like, I'm not even trying to focus on this right now, but spirit just won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of energy. But anyway, um, it's coming. I really do feel like it's coming. And the less you focus on it, the faster it'll come, or I guess the faster it'll be perceived to have come because you weren't, you weren't focusing on it. So you have the king and the queen of swords here with both of their backs turned and the seven of swords is in between them. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I kind of feel like this is an energy of the either, that either, if this is a, if this is like a divine counterpart situation, which it very well could be, um, I feel like the both of you are in this swords energy right now and you're really not trying to focus on anything about each other. Or at least maybe that's what you're trying to and yeah, with the seven of swords here, that is actually might be what you're trying to that's the mask that you two are wearing. Like you straight up don't care, like you're not even trying to pay attention, you're not even trying to watch each other, blah blah blah. You don't even really want to know what's going on with them, but Okay, well, my intuition or spirit guided me to do so, so I'm going to check just a little bit. Bitch, stop lying to yourself. <laughs> just straight up stop lying to yourself. Okay. Also, though, this could... <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, also, this could be an energy of you having a balance between the masculine and feminine energy within you, but there is something deceptive here. I just feel like you're not really showing all of the cards you're keeping your cards close to yourself i'm not getting a malicious energy from this i'm and and you see you have this is the side of the seven of swords where you have a military camp where this individual is stealing seven swords and is trying to get away i get a feeling that especially for the both of you here whether this is just you having a balance between the masculine and feminine energy within you or this is two individuals here Represented one representing the feminine, one representing the masculine, whatnot, whatever. Um, and you're trying to escape. You're trying to get away from some sort of conformity, some sort of structure, some sort of. I guess you could call it stability, but it's stability that's manipulative, manipulative or conformist or controlling and whatever. Um, I mean, these are all military symbol symbologies, right? It, this could be a corporation. This could be a group of people. This could be a hive mind mindset. I just get a feeling that you maybe one or both of you is trying to sneak away from this or is trying to get away from this as quietly as possible, trying to move on with their lives as quietly as possible. I'm going to clarify this also. So we'll see what this says. We'll see what this is a little bit. We'll look a little deeper into that, but yeah. All right, well, actually, let's get into that now. I'm going to start with the King and the Queen of Swords. And I just want to look a little deeper into this energy here for you. I feel like... Okay, so what I'm feeling so far as I look at this King of Swords, I feel like this King of Swords or the masculine energy here, hold on, the masculine energy has a lot on his plate, has a lot to deal with. I feel like it's the masculine here. Now, this could be you recognizing, you know, if this is a balance between the masculine and the feminine, this could be you recognizing that there is something, there is a there is a swift change that ne is needed to made, or at least a strong change that's needed to made, needing to be made. Um, that flash of lightning could be a flash of inspiration. It could be a flash of divine guidance, divine decree. There is a scythe down here at the at the King of Swords' feet. Or, yeah, so that to me speaks to an energy of a reaping, a reckoning almost. Something needs to be... Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I'm going to use the language that I just heard, but it's like something needs to be killed off. 
And then, so if this is just a balance within you, okay, so then you have the Queen of Swords energy, which would be your feminine side, and that's you kind of going cold to the situation. That's you turning, that's, that's the Queen making the executive decision saying, you know what, this is time for, it's time for this to go. Turning her back, going completely cold, and the King of Swords energy, maybe the King, the masculine here within you is deciding how this should happen. And this is something that you're not really trying to let anybody in on. Okay. Now that's the scenario, if it resonates with you, that's the scenario in which you have your masculine and your feminine energies in check, in balance. You know, they're working together. This also could be a situation in which we have two individuals, or i.e. divine counterparts, one in the masculine, one in the feminine. And it feels like the masculine has a lot on his plate right now. A lot that he needs to handle and the queen and the, the feminine here is just like whatever buddy that's your deal I'm not sure that ain't none of my business so I'm just gonna sit here and do me and and figure my own shit out and I'm gonna let you handle yours and when you're ready you let me know and she could be very cold about it she could be very nonchalant straight to the facts like don't it, excuse me don't come here with that mess I ain't got nothing to do with that, right? <laughs> she's not trying to be a bitch. She's not angry. Trust me, she's not angry with you. She's not angry with you at all. But she straight up don't care. Like, honey badger, don't give a fuck. That is your problem, boo-boo. Ain't none of my business. I can't do anything about it. And yet she's still encouraging you. It's like, look, babe, you got this, all right? Don't even worry about it. Just do whatever it is you need to do. I'll be over here when you're done. Like, it's almost as if she's trying to reassure you that she's not angry. She supports you, but also this is none of her business. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's look a little deeper into this here. She, okay, so, and this is interesting because this is something that's been coming through for me specifically in my life, but like she also could be giving off an energy of being cold and like freezing or icing you out because it's just like, I need a break from this. Like you are on my mind too heavily. I can't go five minutes without a thought of you popping into my head. I can't go 30 seconds without feeling your energy. Like, can you give me a break, please? <laughs> <laughs> and masculine, you may be feeling the same way. I just feel like it's the feminine that might be getting a little overwhelmed by this because I really do feel like it's the feminine that's here in this nine of pentacles. Both of you are. Both of you are. I just get this feeling that the that the the masculine is very much, if we're talking divine counterparts, I just feel like the masculine is very, very heavily consumed with this situation mentally, emotionally, physically. I just heard again, there's a lot on his plate. Okay. But he has to, he, he, you can handle it, masculine. Like, come on, you can handle this, but. There's a lot to think about. It might be really overwhelming. Give this two more shuffles. Last one. All right, let's look a little deeper into this. King and Queen of Swords with the Seven, so seven of Swords in between the two of you. <laughs> the King of Wands. There's more, oh. Shit, man. You have the Empress with the King of Wands. The Empress is the overall energy, the King of... So, okay, this really does feel like an energy where the masculine is really working on moving forward towards the feminine. The Empress. And the feminine is just sitting there in her beauty, in her Empress energy. Like I said, she was, she's, it really feels like she's the one in this Nine of Pentacles. Not to say that both of you aren't independent and strong on your own. Like, you have your own lives going on here. But I just feel like this is... I just feel this nine of pentacles is really the feminine and the masculine is making moves to try and f try and get to her. 
And as the King of Wands here, there could be a situation in which he's really biding his time, making sure he has all of his ducks in a row. This, co this coincides with the Two of Wands energy that I was feeling in the beginning. So I do feel like even if this isn't a divine counterpart situation for you, if this is just an everyday life circumstance or you've made a decision to make a massive change to your life or at least a massive change to the direction in your life, this King of Wands energy is, is, is um, uh, confirming what I was picking up on in the Two of Wands in the pre-shuffle in the sense that a decision has been made here. And so now it's about continuing to follow through with that decision, especially with this Knight of Pentacles energy that has come out twice here, right? Those came out in the pre-shuffle in which it was this nighttime scene, and now it's come out here. Oh, damn it. Look at that Five of Cups. That Five of Cups has been, has been haunting us, you guys. So now, all right, so take the divine partnership element out of this situation. And we'll talk about, we'll say this is the masculine and feminine energies within you, the king and the king, queen of swords coming together, working in tandem within you, um, albeit secretly, sure. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Especially, I just heard, until you get all your ducks in a row, you're not trying to let anybody in on this plan of yours. Okay, that's great. The empress is representing a... Um, uh, Gosh, what's the word? What's the word? It is an abundant env environment. Um, an environment, an environment rich in nutrients for something to grow. So while you're sitting here waiting, p biding your time, putting together your plan of action with this King of Wands energy here, you are being supported and guided by the universe. So if any of you out there are feeling like you might have to rush to make a decision, to, to put together a plan, to start taking action, not the case whatsoever. You have the universe on your side. The Empress is kind of encouraging you to take as much time as you possibly can here to allow things to develop and mature and grow as much as they possibly can before you start taking any sort of action steps or really, you know, moving forward any, in any sort of way. Make sure you give, yes, make sure you give your fruits enough time to ripen before you start picking them, okay? There might be a little bit of anxiety building up here. There might be a little bit of tension or excitement building up here with this King of Wands energy, but that's only because, that's really only because you're, you're noticing that things are starting to work. Like, there's progress. Like, whoa, this is progress here, right? I want to get a little bit more on this with this King of Wands here. No, Five of Cups. You stay right in there. Don't you dare come out anymore. <laughs> five of Wands instead. Okay. Interesting. With what? The Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Interesting. The Five of Pentacles. You gotta be kidding me, you guys. First, it was the Five of Cups that I wouldn't let. Co well, yeah, I kind of wouldn't let it come out, but it also it went back in the deck. So okay. Then you have the Five of Wands. Now you have the Five of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. What the hell is happening? First of all, that's a five five five. So that's big change coming through here, especially with this ten in the Wheel of Fortune. So something can't change until someone works through their feelings of inadequacy and someone works through the external chatter, which is in, in, in turn affecting their internal chatter. There could be some, I'm perceiving with this five of wands here, there could be some friends, some colleagues, some peoples, or peoples, people around you that are chattering, chit, 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 chat in your ear that are only helping to make you feel more inadequate make you helping to make you feel less than may helping to make you feel like you'll never be good enough and it may not necessarily even be that they're using those exact words it could just be a situation in which they are bringing up they represent an old you an old way of life um an outdated 
circumstance or reality for you that you are actively trying to get away from king of swords queen of swords seven of swords and yet these people here you might be starting to notice this now these people that are around you or at least some of them are only helping to reinforce this five of pentacles energy or this feeling of lack and whatnot whatever rather than help build you up and thus something can't change something some sort of karma you, it's like you're stuck in some sort of karmic loop until and i'm hearing it's this is the divine masculine until you can release yourself from this five of wands five of pentacles even five of cups energy that did kind of flash me as i was doing this but it's a five 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 okay so that means that there's change happening here um okay i'm gonna get one more pull on this I want to look at the Wheel of Fortune specifically, though. Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Why is the Wheel of Fortune in reverse here, please? The Seven of Cups with the Page of Swords and the Three of Swords. Oh, good Lord. There's the Five of Pentacles again. Okay, well, we have the Empress again. That's good. We also have the High... Pri okay, so the High Priestess came out here. The High Priestess... The, the, okay, the hermit and judgment. All right, so there are a bunch of options. There's a bunch of, this, this is all, this is all supposed to be clarifying the wheel of fortune in reverse. There are a bunch of options. There are a bunch of illusions. There, there's a bunch of lies. There's heartbreak. There's pain. This could be an energy, but I'm getting with this three of swords. I feel like this three of swords is past energy. It's all, ugh, wow. Okay. So this may just be figurative. Don't, don't, if this doesn't necessarily resonate with you, or if this isn't how it's exactly going for you, then take it as it resonates. But literally what I'm seeing is a group of people friends colleagues whatnot whatever best friends i guess or people that you consider to be your best friends it's like they keep bringing up the past the heartbreak it's almost an energy of like oh bo oh, oh oh no buddy i don't know can you like can you like really hold it down can you do this do you remember what happened last time blah blah it's like yo shut the fuck up <laughs> you know what i mean like can you like go away how about you just like disappear how about you just like fuck all the way off and stop trying to bring that shit up? That shit is in the past. Like, can we leave that alone? And now maybe if this is not someone else outside of you, this could be an inner dialogue that you're having. But with this page of swords energy, it's like, it's time to cut through all of the illusion. All right, just cut through it, cut it out and seek through it. Look at the, look at all of the things you know, that might be showing up for you. But here we have the high priestess, the hermit, judgment, and the sun. So what's going to, what's going to turn this wheel of fortune energy in reverse, what's going to turn it upright is you dealing with the soul searching, bringing the illumination forward, cutting through all of this uh, stuff, all of the, the seven of cups, the, the confusion, the options, whatnot, whatever, doing some soul searching, connecting with the spirit, connecting with the universe, um, you know, connecting with your higher self in the high priestess, um, going through the, maybe, maybe this is, maybe the hermit does represent a dark night of the soul, the hermit with the, with judgment, this could be a dark night of the soul energy, but ultimately it's bringing illumination for you. There are, there's a good things. These are good things coming. Okay. It's going to bring illumination, happiness, joy, contentment. Okay. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to look a little bit at, I want to look at this, the 10 of cups with the nine of pentacles. I'm going to shuffle a little bit. Now I was kind of expecting the high priestess to come out on this side of the equation, but it, she came out over there which is interesting. You have this one more shuffle. A number, it, it kind of feels like half the deck is gone. <laughs> anyway, all right, 10 of cups, nine of pentacles. Let's look a little, let's look a little deeper into this, please, spirit. Shut up. The nine of pentacles again? You gotta be kidding me. With the king of cups. 
Oh, well, well, well. And the Ten of Swords. All right, y'all. So looky here. Look, just stay doing you, boo-boo. Just stay doing you. Because this King of Cups is coming. I told you, I felt like the Nine of Cups, I'm sorry, the Nine of Pentacles is the feminine here. She's just sitting pretty, doing whatever it is she does. And in her autonomy. Okay? And it's going to bring the masculine. The King of Cups. It's going to attract a King of Cups. Whoever that is, I don't know. That's yet to be seen, but... Bec now, now, okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Don't get me wrong, because with this Ten of Swords energy here, I feel like it could be, and literally Spirit just said it, it could be your divine masculine counterpart because of the past that is over, because of the heartbreak and the pain. The worst is behind the two of you. Okay, the worst is absolutely behind the two of you. So now it's literally just a matter of a waiting game for... I'm hearing the right person to strike, the right moment to strike. Okay, fine. I want to look a little bit more into this. I'm going to look a little more, a little deeper into the Nine of Pentacles now with the King of Cups. Let's see. Just a little bit more, please, Spirit. I may be all oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, God. I love it when spirit plays like this. Okay. Ooh, y'all. Look. Nine of Cups. The Star. And the Four of Wands. I mean... <sighs> yeah, we're going to leave it there. I mean, you have both cards of wish fulfillment. You have the Star here. Now, the Star has come out in, in, in this area. The, the Nine of Cups is, and the satisfaction of the Nine of Cups is the overall energy. Okay, great. There is a little, I'm not going to lie, there is a twinge of smugness. Okay, but that's fine. Don't worry about that. Um, you have the Star here. And the Star is representing healing energy, not just wish fulfillment. It's also representing heal, uh, uh, healing healing. Okay, with the Four of Wands, the Four of Wands is union, especially Twin Flame union, with that 1111. And I did hear it was the Divine Masculine counterpart that would be coming forward. That would be approaching in some way. All right, y'all. I mean, the cards aren't lying. Don't get caught up on the timing, though, okay? Because this still needs to be handled. Whatever this is here, the heartbreak, the pain from the past, it is changing. Don't get me wrong. It what did 555, y'all, okay? But this needs to happen first. It's blocking the change with the Wheel of Fortune in reverse here, all right? Okay, so I want to get... What we're going to do now is... I'm going to get a closing message from Spirit... And then we're going to get our Oracle Guidance that is coming from Gaia Oracle today. Last shuffle. All right. Here we go, kids. Let's see what we've got. What final closing message do you have? Oh, there's that Wheel of Fortune again. Dooby dooby doo. Justice. Okay, and then we have one more here. What have we got? What have we got? The two of wands. Okay. Overall, en <laughs> overall energy is the empress again. This is the third time the empress has come out in the overall energy. Okay. Which is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It, it, it's speaking to, it's specifically they're saying it's speaking to grace. Okay, and you have the Wheel of Fortune, you have Justice and the Two of Wands. Honestly, what Spirit is saying here is you, whatever decision you've made to move in whatever direction you're moving in, it absolutely was the right decision for you. You might be in an energy right now, dealing with all this other stuff here that's coming up, facing yourself a little more, deep diving a little bit more, clearing away more of the, the negativity or whatnot, the blockages or whatnot. It might be in the face of all this that you're, that you're looking at right here, you might be like, holy shit, what the hell did I do? Like, did I make the right decision? Yes, of course you did. 
Of course you did. Two of Wands with Justice and the Wheel of Fortune. Everything is moving in your favor. Even though the Wheel of Fortune is reversed here right now, that doesn't mean it's going to be reversed forever because it has come out again. Spirit has brought it out for you again. So ultimately, I do feel like event this, this, eventually this Wheel of Fortune energy is in fact going to be turned upright. Okay, for some of you, you are needing to go through this last period of introspection and purging, High Priestess, the Hermit, Judgment, and the Sun, in order to get things set in motion. For some of you, like, that's your next step. For others of you, you're already well on your way, you're well on your path, and justice is being served here. The scales of karma are being balanced. The right decision has, in fact, been made. Excellent. Okay, let's get your oracle guidance now. Okay. Ooh. One last shuffle, and then we'll see what we got. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. Oracle. It's three cards. Just one card, please, spirit. Just one card. Oh, there it is. Oh, Sacred Earth Mother, a message of love. Oh, card number 42. So this does boil down to a six. That's beautiful. Okay. A message of love, sacred earth mother. Oh, and this is card number 42, and we're at 42 minutes in this, this reading. I love it. Okay. We travel the endless corridors of our heart, of, I'm sorry, of our mind until one day we find a pathway that leads us to our heart. Who, do, who you truly are has nothing to do with your personality or your achievements, successes or failures. The quote, you, you think you are, is an actor playing a role that your soul has chosen. The essence of your quote, soul or light with no beginning or no end. I'm sorry, the essence of you is quote, soul or light with no beginning or end. You are an eternal spark of pure creativity, unlimited potential that yearns to be expressed and fulfilled. Your potential is your destiny, it awaits your call. Trust your heart and apply its love and wisdom to all you do. In this way, all you create or do will be a true expression of your soul. It is through expressing your truth that you create things of lasting value. Be true to you. Okay. Well, actually, no, there's an affirmation. And I'll read that too. The affirmation says... I am, in essence, light. I am, in essence, soul. I am pure creative potential. I am guided by my heart. I apply love and wisdom to all I say and do. Let's read it one more time. I am, in essence, light. I am, in essence, soul. I am pure creative potential. I am guided by my heart. I apply love and wisdom to all I say and do. A boop. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.